James Watson and Francis Crick didn't have a very comprehensive background uh, in physics or, um, or in DNA. Uh, they had other backgrounds, but they, this question of DNA really, really, um, really caught their attention. And they actually did some pretty decent work. And they presented a model with, with what they thought would be the, uh, what the DNA molecule looked like. So they presented a DNA molecule that was a triple helix. And on the inside was alternating phosphate and sugar molecules, and they were all back to back. And then on the outside, there was the nucleic bases. See, they figured out that, well, hey, look, DNA has to copy itself. So that must mean that these bases must be on the outside to make copying much easier. Well, you have an expert in crystallography who um, knew what the, what the DNA molecule sort of might have looked like. Um, and based off of the research that she did, she, she looked at their model and she says, ah, this is wrong. Okay, Watson and Creek were very embarrassed. The scientific community said, hey, you guys don't even have a background in this stuff. You guys need to butt out and get out. And they were basically embarrassed and they were kind of sent off and told to leave and leave the question alone. Well, a couple years passed, 1953, Watson and Crick come back. They want to take a look at this DNA, see how far they've come along. They look at the leading scientist of DNA, and lo and behold, this guy presents a similar molecule, a similar shape to what they had presented a couple years ago. So they thought to themselves, wait a second, they haven't figured this out yet. How could that be? Well, they jumped right back into the race, and... There are three pieces of information that they used to help identify the shape of the DNA molecule. And this was based off of the research, for the most part, of Rosalind Franklin, the same woman who kicked them out the first time and said, hey, you guys are wrong. Well, they said, okay, fine. And they ended up using her research. Two out of the three main things that they used to, discover, to figure out DNA was thanks to Rosalind Franklin. The first one was that she... She helped to determine that DNA had a very specific width, okay? She had a very specific width, and it couldn't be any longer wider than what she had determined based off of the images that she had taken with an x-ray machine. She was an expert with the x-ray machine, and um, she also helped to determine that the backbone, the phosphate and sugar molecules, were actually on the outside, not the inside, okay? So those were two main things that Watson and Crick used, okay? Now, with the models that most scientists were presenting with uh, the backbone on the inside and then the phosphate and the, uh, the nucleic bases on the outside, Rosalind Franklin looked at those, um, at those uh, molecules and she determined this can't be because when you put the bases on the outside, okay, you come up with uneven widths, okay? And she already knew that the width of a molecule, of the DNA molecule, had a very specific width. So this will not work. Okay. And here's an image of the uh, image. Here's an image of the X-ray image that she took of DNA. Okay. And based off of this this image, she was able to uh, summarize or conclude that DNA had a double helix and it had a very specific width of 20 angstroms. So the designs that the other scientists were coming up with did not fit because the width was specifically 20 angstroms all the way across and with these you came up with different widths so it couldn't be okay and then of course your graph he did not respect Watson and Crick in fact when Watson and Crick came to him and asked asked him for hey well what do you have so far what do you think about all this he did not respect them so much so that he's like well here here's my research go ahead and take it see what you can find he did not realize, or he did not think that they would actually get anywhere with this. And uh, so Watson and Crick have these two, these two scientists to thank for uh, their discoveries. So once they have that research, they, boom, they booked it, and they went off on their own to see if they could figure out what this DNA molecule was uh, shaped like. Okay. A couple of things real quick before we get into uh, what actually DNA looks like. Um, so... Uh, Crick was able to determine that, again, because the bases, the alternating bases, phosphate and uh, sugar molecule, were on the outside, he still noticed that 
the shapes or the, the molecule that they would come up with was very unbalanced. Okay? It was unstable. So he had a stroke of genius. He realized, well, all the sugar molecules, which are in green, okay, you see how the um, each sugar molecule is pointing up, okay? So they're parallel to each other. He had a kind of he had a stroke of genius and he flipped them. And as it turns out, flipping them helped to stabilize the molecule. So they're anti-parallel, okay? Meaning the sugar molecules are parallel to each other, but they're pointing in opposite directions. And we'll we'll talk about that in another video later. And then Watson came along. Watson came along and figured out that the bases, thymine and adenine, which again, thanks to Shergaff, he realized that these two are most likely combined together. He realized that when you put that when you combine these two with a double double hydrogen bond and you combine cytosine and guanine with a triple hydrogen bond, they actually form the same length. And that was the last piece they needed to determine how DNA actually looked like. Pretty interesting. So with this information, they were actually able to win. <clears throat> In 1962, they won the Nobel Prize. Okay, They won the Nobel Prize along with one of Rosalind Franklin's research friends. Okay, Now, Watson and Crick were able to get a lot of the information that they used uh, from Rosalind Franklin not from her directly, because they actually didn't have her permission to use her research. Her, her research was handed over to them and allowed, and they were allowed to see her research without her permission. Okay? So in 1962, they won the Nobel Prize, and unfortunately, Rosalind Franklin died in uh, 1958 from ovarian cancer. Um, they attribute her cancer to, most likely, uh, the overexposure to x-rays because again her research her field her expertise she was an expert with x-ray crystallography uh, taking images of tiny tiny little molecules like DNA with x-rays and they feel like because she didn't take precautions in protecting herself that she ended up getting ovarian cancer and she died and many believe that if she were alive at that point she would have been given the Nobel Prize along with those guys uh, many believe that uh, there was a lot of sexism that was going on with uh, Watson and Crick, and that's why Rosalind Franklin was kind of left out of the picture. Um, but either way, uh, we want to give her her just due uh, in this in this video, because she was a major, major contributor to uh, finding out what DNA looked like, which is the double helix that we're all used to. That does it for this video for DNA. Uh, good luck in your studying.